Close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And try to stay with the sensation of breathing all the way in, all the way out. The breath arises, the breath passes away, but you want to make your mind as steady as possible. This is a general principle in life. Things come, things go. People are born, people die. In between they have aging and illness. But we've got to make our minds steady in the face of this. Our own aging, illness, and death, and the aging, illness, and death of the people we love, the people we know. If our mind gets knocked over by these things, then we start doing all kinds of unskillful things so that the aging, illness, and death get even worse. But if we train the mind properly, it can get, reach a point where it doesn't have to suffer even though these things keep on happening. The aging still happens, illness happens, death happens. But when the mind is well trained, it doesn't make itself suffer. This is the important principle in life. There's going to be comings and goings. We have that chant every, almost every day, subject to aging, illness, and death, separation. These are the normal facts of life. You know, we often treat them as abnormal, and then the mind gets in an abnormal state as, as a result. We've got to keep our own normalcy of mind in place as we meet up with these normal things of life. Because there is that fifth recollection, the recollection that we're the owners of our actions, heir to our actions. And John Sowat used to like to point that out. He says that the Buddha says everything else is not self, except for this one, your actions. You really are responsible here, so you have to be very careful about how you act, what you do, what you say, what you think. Because this shapes many things. It shapes your own life, and it has a huge impact on the lives of others. As for the things that are not self, those are the results of karma, things you have to learn how to put up with, things you've done in the past. Okay, you can't go back and change it. Now that's something that's not self, but it's going to come back at you. So you've got to prepare your mind so that whatever happens, good or bad, because we can be knocked off by the good things, too. You want to be able to be not knocked off by anything. This is what the Buddha meant when he says you're trained in body and trained in mind, or developed in body and developed in mind. We think of a developed body as one with lots of muscles, but that wasn't his definition of a developed body. That was someone who was able to withstand pleasure and not get overcome by it. And the developed mind is not one that's been off to study lots of degrees. It's someone who's able to handle pain and not get overcome by it. So we've got to learn how to keep our mind normal. Because everything else that happens to us is normal, even though it seems abnormal to us when aging comes, or illness comes, or death comes. It feels, it feels like something's wrong. Well, make sure the only thing that doesn't get wrong is your own actions. And this is the way of the world. Once, once you've got a body, it's going to age, it's going to grow ill, it's going to die. That's natural. That's normal. But the defilements of the mind are not normal. They don't have to be there. Greed, aversion, delusion are unnecessary. And they create all this extra suffering and stress, so why give in to them? You've got to train the mind to be steady and still in the face of these things so you don't get knocked over. And that way it comes to normalcy, a state of peace and equilibrium. And the more you come to know that, the more you appreciate it, that this is the direction in which true happiness lies. <laughs>